Hey guys, welcome to our portion of the vlog. I'm with Matt Lee. What What's up? Happening? <laughs> it was happening. Okay. I love that, dude. So we're at Wild Arrow. I finally made time to come up here to pick up some arrows. If you've watched any of our recent vlogs or Total Archery Challenge shooting stuff, I've been shooting with two arrows and I recently broke one of those. So I'm down to only one single arrow. These guys are completely slammed this time of the year. So we're sneaking in the back room, try to find these guys, get our arrows and bounce and don't take too much of their time. But look at the crew. Oh, hey! Hey! <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome to the hello. cave. Welcome the, to the cave. cave. It's hot in the cave today. I, I took the AC out of here. And took That's because we're burning through some. <laughs> Was it really yours? Yeah. That yeah. little unit? Yeah, I'm bringing it back. I was gonna bring it back today. That's messed up, man. Well, my AC went out in my house. I have to take it home. Yeah. yeah. I have I mean, a bulldog that hates. Think of others. <laughs> hates the heat. Hates the heat. Yeah. She overheats. The really only quick. reason we let it slide is because it's a bulldog. I don't care if he sweats and dies. I he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> He's very selfish. We got cookies for I snacks to keep say. us motivated. Eat a cookie, man. Dang. Yeah. What is that? I might have to steal so that. my figure. Dang, Dang macadamia and white bro. chocolate. You know how we roll. Yeah, look at that. Empty racks over there. We got an empty rack out front. Well, you guys are doing a lot of work, huh? Yeah. What are you going to bring in your new calls? Tis the season. New calls? Yeah. You guys going to sell them? Is I'll that what you're saying? Them. I, I should have brought it. I, I had two some. sitting on my kitchen counter. I could have brought them. So much confusion going on over here. Oh no. We got, we got stuff it, it looks like chaos, but it's organized chaos. We know what we're <laughs> I doing. know where everything yes, is. Yes, that's right. It's an organized chaos. disaster. Literally, like all everybody knew, like, oh, his arrows are in the bottom right tube. Yeah. Inserts are over here. <laughs> I've never done this before. Try to use I don't. This is my first day. Don't uh, mess them up. First day I called in sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's make sure we get it right. We left Wild Arrow and made our journey over to Easton, the Salt Lake Archery Center. It's pretty nice that we have access to this place right here in Salt Lake, right by the airport. Indoor shooting up to like 70, 75 yards. So we're going to go dial this in. They left me with a sight tape for, what was it, 267? Yep. And yeah, we're going to see how that does, but more importantly, we're gonna fine tune my 50 and 60. So 30 and 40 seem to be close, 50 and 60 need a little help. Where are the markers? 30 meters. What's this one, 40 or 50? 40 yards. You think it's 40? Can't tell. That one's got some damage. Archery season is coming quick, guys. Our first hunt is archery deer and elk. The tag that I have is actually good for both where I'm hunting, but I have yet to do any scouting, which is unlike me. So we got lots of work to do. <laughs> Seems like the first after like the first hundred shots or so the st with string stretch, I already feel like the pins I had figured out are shooting a little low. So I'm gonna have to adjust. Yeah, that one wasn't bad. <laughs> so I got new arrows. I always try to do the brightest color as my knock up or my fletch up. What do they call that one? Your knock vein? Knock vein. Knock vein up. This one's going to be green. Hmm. Somewhere low. Maybe a little bit low. You're like, oh yeah, I'm so proud of myself. But then you're like, 
No, I'm not. <laughs> That's a tight little group. A little low. That's what we're going to do today here at the, sh the indoor range. Just kind of fine tune and micro adjust all my pins. And uh, once I get 30, 40, 50, and 60 dialed, I can test out that sight tape and kind of see where we're at with that. A little low, huh? So we move the target up to 30. 40 felt like it was consistently low, like you guys saw. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to start right over from 30 and then move down. Because if everything is a little low, I'll probably just move my sight window down a little bit. Man, I flinched a couple times. It's hard for me to tell, dude. Am I going blind or what? It's only 30 it's yards. Touch low. So Eric is back moving his sight window down a little bit because his group has steadily been low. So we're going to pull these, moving his sight window, and we'll shoot another group. Okay, adjustments were made at 30. Six clicks down. White. We made the adjustments needed. So I went six micro clicks down, which was just a guess based off the last time I was here. I kind of had an idea of like how high that would bring it. And I think the guessing is uh, dead on at 30, which now should also bring up my 40. So I'll probably start there. But guys, I don't know if there's a whole ton that we want to film here at Easton. This is just for the Hush Life vlog, but hopefully you guys enjoyed our section. Me and Matt are going to sit here and try to get some reps in without filming. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Now we'll bounce over to some of the other guys. See ya. Why does it say permethrin on it? Oh, odorless permethrin. Guys, we are prepping ourselves. We're going on a fun, a fun trip. It will be our first hunting trip of the year, actually. First big game hunting trip of the year. Uh, we're headed to Alaska on in two days to go chase caribou with our good buddies from Weatherby. But if you guys haven't saw, we just uploaded a video yesterday of us in Alaska about a month ago. If you guys haven't watched it, go check it out. It's a super rad fishing video we did up in uh, Alaska. And uh, Logie did a good job with the video. So go and check it out. But we're going back, guys. I've never been to Alaska. And then this year, I've been very lucky I get to go twice. But um, so what we're gonna do, well, when we were there last time, what we figured out is Alaska is an amazing place, except for the stupid little bugs. Mosquitoes were terrible. Uh, so I talked to a couple guys and they definitely highly recommended us treating all of our clothing with permethrin. And so this is actually a diluted version of permethrin. It's like only 0.05% um, of the actual ingredient, but uh, it should work. So what we're gonna do is, I just watched a video, you wanna spray at least three ounces on your clothes. Guys, this doesn't just work for mosquitoes, this works for chiggers and it works for ticks as well. So if in the spring, if you're hunting around ticks and you don't want them, this is a good idea. So we're gonna try to get uh, three ounces of this stuff spread out on the front and the back of our base layers. Looks like we're doing a uh, first light yard sale. Ten dollars, ten dollars. I got all the grays and solids, you got all the camos. Yeah. One thing they don't tell you about this stuff, I should have told you earlier, Logan, is that it does attract grizzly bears. Sweet. Especially coastal black brown bears. <laughs> coastal black bears? Yep. I heard those New ones breed. are the worst. New breed. So they're saying three ounces is that key, and it doesn't matter if it's extra large to a small. You want three ounces per garment. We. Are gonna run out. Yeah. Only the fronts of us are gonna be covered. What were you saying about chrysanthemum? So when I used to sell pest control, people would be like, well, is this stuff that you spray around the yard safe for our pets? And we would tell them that the chemical we used, I don't know if I would use the word chemical, that's not a good, that's not a good phrase or word. Concentrate. To, the material we use uh, is derived from a chrysanthemum flower, which is natural right that's the same what this is was what they're saying it's derived one of those keywords you want to use when you're selling pest control it's derived from the chrysanthemum flower which is a natural uh bug deterrent i guess so the more you know with casey so um our good buddies from weatherby went and did the same trip we were going to getting ready to go do in alaska and one of the things they said which was hard was trying to get like a shot like a lot of hunters feel most comfortable laying prone. So laying down on your belly, putting your gun up on a backpack or some sort of rest. 
but it's really hard to do where we're going in Alaska and just because of the uh, tundra, how, the way it is, and they're just tall enough bushes, it's hard to get over. So uh, I got these things last year, these guys sent these to me. Now, this is a Death Grip by Bog Pod. And it's super legit because you can dial your, you know, put your gun on here and it'll hold it. And then you can just adjust. But so I think we're gonna either, this is their bigger version. They just sent me this. This thing's pretty beefy, but it's super stable. Um, but I think this is gonna be the answer because we find a care, we're not gonna be taking long shots. Probably 300 yards would be like ultimate max. Um, trying to get it under 100, if not, you know, a little closer. So I like these for the idea of knowing that you would always have a shot. So that's their beefier version. This is the one we used last year. Gage used it a lot, or a Actually, couple times. Actually, used this in Kodiak to kill my bucktail. Oh, you did? Yeah, not this exact, same model, Brian's model, but yeah. But yeah, so, this is probably the, gonna be the one I pack in there because it's a little lighter. It is a little more shaky, but not bad. But man, it, when you're on this thing, the only thing you have to be careful of is make sure your gun's level when you get it in there. Yeah, so anytime we see caribou and they're within 300 yards, I think we'll just throw these down and get the gun on them. And we'll have a shot for sure. Nice thing about these two, if you're, here's a recommendation for um, taking kids out or youth out, or even taking an adult out that's kind of new at hunting, is tar target acquisition is always the biggest problem for new hunters. And it can be even be at the range, they have a hard time. So what I've always done with my kids is I've made them find the target in their own scope. I don't go and put the scope on it and then have them look through it. I've always made them do that so they can learn that acquisition, the target acquisition. But if you're out in the field and things are happening fastly and you have a kid or a new hunter, you can throw this down on there get it close to the animal that you're looking at and then have them look through it and boom, they're on it. So, but I think these are gonna work good for Alaska just because like I said, we're gonna be running and gunning, but you know, we don't wanna be messing around trying to get a shot and not be able to kill a caribou because we didn't have a, a good rest. So I think we're gonna take those up there with us. And uh, hopefully guys, we come back heavy with a bunch of caribou. Bunch of velvet. Bunch of velvet caribou. Bam, bam, we're shooting. Bang. Got him. What's up guys? I'm up here at a 3D archery course by Rockport Reservoir. I'm shooting it with my buddy Braden. What's going on? It's about 10 or 15 targets, so come along and let's hopefully kill some foam. All right, first target is a success. 25 yard feeding deer. Looks like I was just a touch low, but I was holding a little low. Braden's right in the 12 ring. Bullseye, son. Nice. <laughs> there is a coyote up here through the trees at 65 yards. See if I can hit her. Boom. Well, left I think. On the way up to the coyote brain shot there's a second target. The ram at 48 yards. Yep. 48. Alrighty. Oh yeah. Hi. I think it was a pretty good shot though. Let's do one more. I was holding a little high because everything's been shooting a little low so let's try that one again. Not terrible, but uh, definitely can tell I have not been shooting my bow near as much this year. So let's go pull some arrows. All right, now I'm gonna shoot one or two arrows at the coyote target brain shot from 70. This is a good little scenario with some branches to the right and a little hill below it. That was a good one. <laughs> good shot, let's see if I can replicate it. Nice. Two shots at 32 yards for me look pretty good, but Braden was launching <laughs> some from 70. Not very good at all. There's lizards. There's my two shots. This one, yeah, not very good. <laughs> and then this one's just low. Would have been pretty good, but. Heading up to the ram, I shot at 50, 48, which like I said, um, I got this bow set up a couple weeks ago and haven't shot it past 30. There's some uh, growing pains for sure. 
But here's my three shots. My first two I held high on purpose. And second shot I held right on and was still high. All righty, we got an antelope at 40. Ooh, way low. A little bit low. Nice shot. Antelope at 40 yards. Good one. Oh yeah, dude. Nice, 40 yard group is coming together nicely. Once I'm calming down and relaxing and focusing on my release, arrows seem to be stacking a lot nicer. But here's 40 yards. There's my two, Braden's last two. That first one, I think he pulled a little yeah. bit. Here we go, Braden at 100 yards on an elk through some trees. Crittening for birdie. Foam. Got it. Nice, dude. See if I can go for two. Oh, he's feeling confident. The one was just a little back. I gotta get it in the zone. Dude, oh. dude that was good, I think. Nice, dude. I was kind of aiming for like this like shadow line right here. Uh-huh. So I was that's actually where I'd rather shoot an elk. This center third. Oh yeah. And lungs are just so big. Alright, guys, that does it for my portion of the vlog. Just shot the 3D course. Now let's pass it on to somebody else. What's up guys? Welcome back to another Hush Life vlog. Uh, I'm sitting in my office, which uh, it's newly remodeled for me. I'll give you guys a little spin around the office to kind of show you uh, what's in it. I spent a lot of time in here. If you haven't already noticed, maybe you, uh, if you watched the Live in the Land series, you kind of caught a glimpse of predominantly kind of what my role has been with Hush for a long time, which is Lots of office work, lots of business work. But I'm wearing a couple new things. Some of you guys may uh, have seen some of the samples that Eric showed before of the flannels. And so I'll give you kind of an update on the flannels. And then this is also a brand new sample hat. So I'll show you a little bit more about that. But we have been talking about doing flannels for probably three years. There's been some places like companies uh, where you could basically buy the flannel already made and just like put your brand on it. We kind of looked at some of those and ultimately decided didn't like the quality, uh, didn't really like the fit. So we kind of put it on pause until we could find a better alternative. So we are custom making these. They don't exist. You can't buy them anywhere else. Uh, we added some spandex material to them so they're comfortable and stretchy. Wanted to make sure the fit is right. Obviously the look and patterning is right. Uh, and then the branding's right. So we've made a couple different revisions and uh, I'll show you kind of the progress, some of the changes that we've made here. So this was like version one. Um, kind of had like a hanging loop tag here. We had some neck labeling that we messed around with, but ultimately we didn't like it because it was a little too scratchy. So we've made a few revisions with the branding and the labeling. Uh, we decided to keep the labeling on the front pocket and then we'll have some other detail work. But we like the bigger buffalo check, kind of like an old school throwback style flannel. And then again, the addition of the spandex makes it just real stretchy and comfortable. I would consider this like, probably like a, a mid-weight flannel. Certainly not a heavy one, but one that you know you could wear out on the town, you could definitely wear it on a hunt. And uh, we kind of like living in flannels a lot of the year. so. I'll show you a couple other little details as we uh, transition into version two. So version two, we added some different branding on the main kind of yoke tag here. It's also a softer material, so it shouldn't scratch your neck if you happen to wear it without an undershirt. It's gonna be hard to tell in here, but there's some detail, it just says hush, hunt fish. That'll be on the actual button components of the shirt. So just some additional stuff. The tagline, you only get so many opening days, something that's stuck with our brand for a long time. We had the antler with it, but it kind of like, when you step back from this, it didn't seem like you could see it very well. So we decided to drop the antler because we have it in other places and just go with true text on the new one. And it's just a little easier to read. Um, and again, that's just kind of at the very bottom. I don't know what the technical term is for that. So the last piece of detail I'll just show you real quick is on the back. So they're looking at the back 
of the flannel. This is just a little back yoke shoulder hit. It's also branded Hush. So as far as the flannels go, uh, they should be available on our website and in some of the select Shields locations approximately mid of middle of September. We're gonna have four different colorways. We're gonna have a red option, kind of an olive green option, a brown and black option, and then like a gray and black option. So we're super excited. I know like blue is kind of on, on the horizon too, but maybe that'll be like in a different iteration. Uh, definitely something we're looking forward to. Hope you guys enjoy them. Uh, we put a lot of time, effort, thought into this. Yeah, it's just a flannel, but again, we wanted to try to customize it, make it our own, and I think, I think we have the ticket. Now, as far as this hat goes, we're gonna have a lot of new designs coming up uh, this fall that we've been working on. So let me show you a little bit more about the hat. Okay, this is a, another custom piece. Uh, I was inspired by like old school camo and I, I've always just appreciated it. My dad growing up had a bunch of old school patterns. So this is kind of one iteration that we're working on, kind of the old school greenish type pattern. This isn't the exact patch we're gonna have on it. It's just a sample so I can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, but it's got the gray mesh and then it will all be like custom branded hush inside. We will have these available in bent brim and then also in flat brim. And just so you guys know, like the flat brim is gonna give you a deeper crown. So if you have a larger head, the flat brim is probably the way to go. If you have like a smaller to more mid-sized head, the bent brim should be the ticket. I'm pumped about these, uh, again, mid-September, and then we're gonna have another one too, like I think old school, kind of brown tone camo. Uh, also, you know, something that we'll drop uh, with a bunch of different t-shirt designs, hoodie designs, really just trying to continue to ele like elevate the brand and give you different, different options. And I will tell you this, over the years, historically, obviously we're Western hunters, kind of where we spend the majority of our time, but we've had a ton of requests for whitetail inspired designs. Um, it's taken some time, but I think we have something that we like. Hopefully any of you guys that are uh, maybe into whitetail hunting or just into deer antlers in general would gravitate to this, but I'll give you a little sneak teaser of what I'm talking about. All right, that is the new Icon whitetail antler design. If you guys notice, very similar to the Fireball icon design that we have, we hired the same artist to do this. This is inspired by a whitetail shed that Eric found in South Dakota, and we have turned it obviously into that logo. So let us know what you think in the comments. <clears throat> we got a couple other whitetail inspired themes. Uh, our partnerships with Shields Outdoor is also growing. They picked up 16 additional stores, so we're gonna be in 26 of the Shields stores. So uh, we were kind of in a lot of the Western stores, Colorado, um, Utah, obviously here in Sandy, Montana, uh, and now we picked up a big portion of like the Midwest. So we'll be stores in Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, the Dakotas, Texas, Nebraska, Iowa, and uh, they're gonna be buying a lot of the different new whitetail themes and also mixed in with some of the Western themes and then the, the mountain stores, so like Colorado, Montana, We'll, uh, in Utah, we'll have uh, a selection of the flannels too. So we'll make a bigger announcement when that drops, but that should be around the 1st of September to mid-September. We'll be adding all the different Shields stores into the mix, plus online. So if you have a Shields in your local community, you'll be able to go check it out, kind of touch, feel, see some of the stuff we have from Hush. So I've been spending a ton of time on that, and then also we're getting ready to do our very first hunt of the year. Myself and Casey and Logan, and Luke from Weatherby and Mac from Weatherby are heading to a special place. Let me show you. I just actually had a special delivery. I'll show you what we're gonna be doing, how we're gonna be doing. Well, any idea yet? Right there, those are paddles. And these are rafts. We're using rafts. I'm not gonna tell you the details yet. Maybe Casey already broke the news, I'm not quite sure. We'll have more updates on next week's vlog, but we got a big adventure, a store, and we're gonna be using these rafts to float out of our adventure spot. So I could not be more excited, but 
with a big adventure comes big planning, big logistics, big packing, trying to get my gear list organized, something that we haven't ever done before. So there's a little anxiety in the sense of what are we gonna forget and what do we need to make sure we bring on this new adventure. Aside from that, let me show you my office. So I redid my office, kind of like a little storage desk area. This is from my Kodiak trip that Logan and I took with All X last year. And that is a Harlequin duck. Just got it back and I think it turned out beautiful. Just, I wanted it on a simple little base. It's got like some barnacles and it's like sea life on it. But that is a Kodiak Harlequin duck. Pretty rare species, it's the beautiful drake. And uh, wings and flight taxidermy. Jeff Nelson did a phenomenal job. It's my grandfather's flag from when he served in World War II. This is uh, the Colorado mule deer from 2018. Got a really cool piece of artwork that uh, someone gave us at one of the hunt expos. And these were from actually some of our Colorado Bucks, the Semi Live series. The new bow, it's the Hoyt Ventum 30. Been shooting that a lot with the Easton Axis 4 millimeters. That, my friends, is a California wild boar skull. Got a couple Texas javelinas. It's my first ever deer shed when I was 10 years old from Eastern Oregon. Really killer sh deer shed. A couple bear skulls it's from Canada. And then a big one from Oregon. Nevada pronghorn. This is uh, one of the new blaze hats that we have on the website. Some old stuff I found, some arrowheads from Texas. Some random stuff out in the woods I picked up, a bunch of books. And that is, let's see if I can get it to, there we go, that's Colorado 2020. Big thanks to you guys for this one. 100,000 subscribers. And then that's a super cool piece from First Light, their 10 year anniversary piece I got last year's bow, the Hoyt RX-4 is my backup, and a couple sheds. Got the work desk here, it raises up. So I can stand, I can stand and do my work. And uh, it doesn't make, get my freaking back all jacked up from sitting all day long. So super cool piece there. Show you a couple more things and then uh, we'll pass along to, uh, to someone else. So I got my man chair here, pretty cool. Uh, this is an Axis deer cape from a doe that I killed in Texas a few years back. And then this is a, a buck cape, uh, actually from Texas in last year, that Eric and I were on together. It's cool how the coloration is a little darker, kind of more grayish tones up here versus kind of the brown tones of this doe. But they're super soft and they kind of match my chair pretty good. And then right here, this is a uh, this is a painting my grandmother did. She was never into hunting or outdoors. And when my parents moved, they picked it up out of their attic. My grandma's signature, but I love it. It's in the original frame she had it put in. She probably painted this in the 80s, and uh, it just like goes perfectly with, with my office. So, treasured piece of family memorabilia. And then I got the old ne Nevada buck from when I was with my pops. And then the last piece is that guy. Look at those devil points. So that big boy right there was the very first hunt I was on with Casey. First time I'd ever met him with our buddy Cody and uh, my dad and myself had rifle tags down in New Mexico. Took that really cool unique bull and that was the first time I learned of hushing. Anyways, that's what I've been doing guys. A lot of uh, office work, a lot of busy work to try to get more products that we love and that hopefully you'll love onto our website. And I'll give you one more update. Okay, last update, game bags. This whole COVID supply chain thing is, is really frustrating, but the elk game bags sold out incredibly fast. They were gone in less than 30 days. We do still have a few deer bags uh, kicking around. We've had a shipment on order to restock for months and uh, they just keep keeps getting hung up. They are somewhere in transit. We hope they're gonna be showing up by the beginning of September. If you are interested in picking up some of the elk, game bags, you can jump on our website on the homepage and there's a place that you can sign up with your email to be notified when they uh, are back in stock. So you don't have to keep tracking them down, keep an eye on them. They'll just ping you with a quick email, say back in stock and you can grab them. We're dealing with it the best we can. We appreciate your patience and uh, can't wait to share a little bit more about our big adventure coming up. Thanks for all the support guys. We'll see you next week.